ومن الجولة الرياضية تعالوا نروح لعروس البحر الأبيض المتوسط محافظة الإسكندرية محافظة الإسكندرية شهدت فعالية الفعالية دي هي مهمة لأنها ملتقى الأطفال للمناخ اللي نفذتها شركة مياه الشرب بالإسكندرية للتوعية بترشيد المياه شارك في هذا الملتقى رئيس وفد الاتحاد الأوروبي بالإضافة لعدد من سفراء الدول الأوروبية بالقاهرة في الحقيقة كاميرا برنامج صباح الخير يا مصر كانت موجودة وكانت ليندا عبد اللطيف زميلتنا موجودة هناك ورصدت لينا أهم ما جاء في هذا الملتقى وده اللي هنتابعه من خلال هذه الفقرة ملف تغير المناخ من ابرز الملفات على الساحه حاليا وده لان كوكب الارض بيشهد تاثيرات حقيقيه وملموسه عشان كده لازم الناس بكل اعمارها يكون عندها وعي بهذه الظاهره وكيفيه مواجهتها والتعامل معها من المنطلق ده واحتفالا بشهر الاتحاد الاوروبي نظم وفد الاتحاد الاوروبي والشركه القابضه لمياه الشرب والصرف الصحي احتفاليه ملتقى الاطفال للمناخ هنا في محافظه الاسكندريه لتوعيه الاطفال بجوانب التغيرات المناخيه المختلفه تعالوا نشوف مع بعض مش مهندس عايزين حضرتك تكلمنا اكتر عن الفعاليات والانشطه اللي انتم بتنظموها الاطفال النهارده عشان تعلموهم كيفيه ترشيد استهلاك المياه في البدايه كل سنه وحضراتكم كلكم بخير وكل مصر يا رب والشعب المصري بخير انت عارفه حضرتك احنا بنقوم بحملات توعويه على مدار العام الغرض منها ان احنا بنعرف النشء الجديد وكل مواطن مصري عن اهميه الميه وعن ترشيد الاستهلاك فاحنا امتدادا ليوم الميه العالمي اللي عملناه من شهرين ومستمرين في الانشطه التوعيه في الفتره اللي فاتت النهارده عاملين مع الاتحاد الاوروبي زي ما حضراتكم كده شايفين ان احنا عاملين يوم توعوي الغرض منه ان احنا بنعرف النشء من مدارس كتيره جدا عندنا اكتر من داخلين تقريبا ب 300 او اكتر من 300 نشء جاي لنا بنعرفهم اولا طبعا اهميه الميه ازاي يرشد الاستهلاك عن طريق العاب صغيره زي ما حضراتكم كده شايفين في النهايه الرساله الاساسيه ان احنا طبعا تعريف النشء بتاثير التغيرات المناخيه وطبعا بنشجعها وبنشجع كل مواطن على ترشيد الاستهلاك ان شاء الله عشان نحافظ على الميه الجنه والاجيال اللي جايه ان شاء الله سياده لو عايزين حضرتك تكلمنا اكتر عن المعلومات التوعويه اللي بتقدموها للاطفال فيما يخص شبكه الصرف يمكن عايز اقول لك ان في برنامج مستديم من وبين شركه الميه تحت رعايه الشركه القابضه للوصول لجميع طلبه المدارس وطلبه الجامعات والعاملين في المنشات الحكوميه ويمكن في الصيف كمان بنلجا الى النوادي ونقابل المصطفين في الاسكندريه. الـ الـ الاساس المعلومات اللي بنقولها لهم اهميه الحفاظ على ترشيد مياه الشرب وفي نفس الوقت المحافظه على شبكات الصرف الصحي بعدم القاء مخلفات في الشبكه سواء في خلال المنزل أو من خلال المطابق والحاجات اللي هي الفتحات الموجودة في الشارع أو شناشي الأمطار في اسكندرية لأن إحنا حضرتك عارفة إن بالنسبة لنا في اسكندرية فترة الشتاء بيبقى فيه عبء جامد جدا على الشبكة لأنها بتستوعب مية الصرف الصحي ومعاها مية الأمطار كمان. أنا اسمي حالة جبالة. تعرفي ايه حالة عن التغيرات المناخية؟ ان هو احنا بقينا بنستخدم دخان كتير في المصانع والعربيات والاتوبيسات فهو أم أم بقى في حاجة متكونة حوالين الارض هو لما الشمس بتدخل الطاقة بتاعتها جوه جوه الارض عشان تسخنها يعني فهي ما بقتش بتطلع فهو دلوقتي بقت الدنيا اسخن من زمان طب محمد احنا دلوقتي في شهر خمسة ولسه الجو برد في اسكندرية تعرف ايه السبب؟ تغير مناخي طيب قولي بقى كلمني كده شوية عن الفعاليات والألعاب اللي انت عملتها النهاردة انا مثلت هنا زي مهندس واتعلمت حاجات كتيرة كأني زي اللي انا اتعلمت ازاي ما استهلكش المية وازاي المهندسين والعمال بيعملوا وبيتعبوا ازاي فأنا حسيت بده لما أنا كنت مثلت المشهد ممكن تعرفي ده بنفسك؟ آه أنا اسمي منة الله مصطفى وانتي؟ علي وائل سالم إيه رأيك في الإيفنت بتاع النهاردة؟ آه 
حلو وان هو بيعلمنا عن ان احنا نوفر في 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 الميه والكهرباء وكده الماء نعمه من الله وهو سر هذه الحياه وقال تعالى وجعلنا من الماء كل شيء حي واذا لم نحافظ عليه سيموت كل شيء فحافظوا على الماء لان قطره الماء اغلى من الذهب وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا تسرفوا ولو كنتم على نهر جار You're actually seeing the head of the EU delegation to Egypt, Ambassador Christian Berger. We're very delighted to have you with us here today. How, in your opinion, can we raise a generation that is aware of the danger of climate change? Thank you very much for, for this very important question. Um, we are here today with many, many kids to do exactly that. Uh, we need to start with the youngest generation. We need to create awareness that there is a water scarcity, there are, there are climate problems, but we also need to raise the awareness that all of us, we can contribute to this. So the best is you start very early with educational uh, activities, but also with lots of games, with fun, uh, to, to create the awareness that we need to address these issues. Uh, because we will, and of course our kids later on will have to deal with this. So the earlier we start, uh, the better it is. And you will see here many activities uh, that help the kids to understand that this is an important issue. There is actually an important Egyptian-European cooperation actually in the environmental protection as well as adaptation and mitigation of the effects of climate change. Could you please tell us a little bit more about such cooperation? Certainly. Um, first of all, we are very happy that Egypt is going to host uh, a very important conference later on this year in Sharm el Sheikh. It's COP27, which is the follow up conference to what we just had at the end of last year in, in Glasgow, where many decisions were taken, also on the basis of earlier conferences. So I think Egypt will also play a very important role uh, to uh, remind everyone and to push for the implementations of all the commitments that, that have been taken, also of course to prepare for future uh, conferences. So at the European level, um, A, we, are, we will con uh, continue contributing financially uh, to help countries to meet uh, those goals, but secondly, we have ourselves, for ourselves, we have decided very important goals uh, on how to reach this, uh, this climate uh, uh, targets. One is we want to make Europe the first continent uh, to be carbon neutral by, by, 20, by 2030. So a lot of efforts are going this, into this uh, to develop, for example, to develop um, uh, uh, renewable uh, energy sources. Here we are working hand in hand with Egypt because also here uh, with solar energy, with wind energy and the latest the development of hydrogen these are very important uh, contributions to, to meet those, those goals. There's also 50 years of cooperation to protect the North and South Mediterranean and 45 years of Egyptian-European cooperation. In light of that, we'd like you to speak a little bit more and adding to what you already mentioned earlier about the energy cooperation between Egypt and the European Union, we'd like you to speak a little bit more about that and also the cooperation that has been there in regards to the confrontation of climate change and the financing as well. Certainly. Um, you're, you're quite right. We, uh, we, uh, we have nice anniversaries this year, um, 50 years of cooperation between the north and, and the southern shores of the Mediterranean. We call it this Euro-Mediterranean uh, partnership. Um, and of course then with the individual countries, we, we started very soon after that the cooperation with, so with Egypt 45 years ago. Now, over all these years, I think we have developed a very close cooperation in many different fields and sectors. I, used, I normally would say in all walks of life we have a very close engagement and cooperation. So we have focused on some of the important issues. So water is certainly one of them. Um, for many years we have been involved in the water sector by helping um, uh, renovate and rehabilitate, for example, irrigation ca uh, canals, channels, uh, by also working on water distribution networks, sewage, uh, water cleaning, uh, and all these, these, these issues, but also on regulatory frameworks. So there is a whole host of activities, and we, in the future, we will continue focus on this. So we are at the moment um, discussing with our partners in the government uh, what we call flagship projects, so big projects. And water is one of the biggest sort of issues that we are going to be involved in uh, in the future. So this is goes hand in hand with the work we do on climate in general. And you, again, you are right. We had have we have had many programs and projects focusing on on climate. 
So the, the issue of energy and renewable energy, uh, we have been working with the government on an energy strategy. We will not continue um, doing this. And we, will, we also have in the new partnership priorities that we, that we have uh, agreed and they will be formally adopted uh, very soon, we have a chapter on, on environment to make the point how important this is at the moment. So um, we, I'm, I'm really looking forward to a very close engagement with the, with the Egyptian authorities, with the government. But not only, I mean, ha events like this, we also need to work with the people themselves, with, with the citizens, uh, because they can contribute a lot to, the, uh, to, to preventing climate change. Um, United for Climate is the slogan that the European Union is raising. How can we achieve the slogan in light of the cooperation between Egypt and the EU ahead of the uh, COP27 that is to take place in the resort city of Sharm el-Sheikh? Let me come on, on, on two levels. One at the European level. So we have developed a new concept which is called Team Europe. So this is not only the institutions of the European Union, but the 27 member states of the European Union, the big European financial institutions like the EIB, like the EBRD, uh, the big banks of the European Union, but also the banks of the member states. We all work together because we are facing big challenges, so we need to be united in facing those and working on these challenges. And here we also uh, want to work very closely with Egypt as a partner, as the chair and the presidency of, of COP27, so with a very strong drive uh, in, in making these changes possible, to create also the awareness at the level of the individual citizens to make these changes uh, possible. So we are looking forward to have this cooperation in, in, the, in the preparation of uh, COP27 at the meeting itself. So many European uh, uh, delegations will come to, uh, to, to Sharm el-Sheikh uh, to discuss these this very important issues, but not only that, to take them the decisions that we're going to take at uh, the meeting in Sharm el to take those decisions forward and implement them. Well, the year 2022 is the European Year of Youth and is also the year when the Climate Change Conference will take place right here in Egypt. How can we actually um, integrate youth into confronting uh, the climate change issue? It's the year of the youth in Europe and it's the year of civil society here in Egypt. So these two things, I think these two concepts go hand, hand in hand. They go very nicely together because we need uh, people, civil society to be involved, to come up with, uh, to describe the problems that they are facing. Be it, you know, uh, public transport problems, environmental problems, uh, sewage problems, whatever they are. And also to, because they are dealing with these problems, they very often also have ideas how to address these problems and find solutions. So that's at the level of civil society. Youth comes in uh, because, I mean, we, we keep saying this is their future or youth is our future. But I think uh, we should also have in mind that, that young people are also here now. So it's also our presence, not only our future. So we need to bring them in now. Uh, in order to discuss these issues and to come up with ideas, with programs, with projects, with awareness, with commitments, uh, how to address all these very difficult challenges. Your Excellency, the head of the EU delegation to Egypt, Ambassador Christian Berger, thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank, you, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you.